Digital video signal is the backbone of our visual presentation systems. It contains and transports the signal that carries, say, your critical content to a boardroom, or a full-color movie for your entertainments, or maybe the graphic data at a sporting event at a large stadium. There's so much it can do. Hand-in-hand hand with digital video signal comes all types of displays to showcase said signal. Let's talk about the very nature of video signal itself. There are two groups of components in a video signal, color signals and synchronization signals. Then there are several ways this can be combined to create different types of video signal. Each type has a different requirement for bandwidth, as well as how fast we can get it to the other side. Not all video systems allow for the native signal to pass all the way through the signal path to the end, so video signal processing is typically in order. You probably are already aware of the common abbreviation of RGB and YCBCR. This is used to talk about the color space in video signals and digital photography. In our explanation, the color signals we are referring to are red, green, and blue. For moving video images along with RGB is the sync signal. Horizontal and vertical sync preserves the time relationship between video frames and then correctly positions the image horizontally and vertically on the display. Now, how much a signal replicates the intensity of these colors and the sharpness and the quality of the image in motion requires more or less bandwidth. Depending on the signal type, the lines of the data are written on the display from one corner of the display to the other. As the signal is written frame by frame, it has to stay in sync with its counterpart, like seen here. Without these signals, the image on the display would simply roll from one side to the other and top to bottom. This leads us to scan rates. So we have horizontal and vertical sync, correct? The rate at which those lines are drawn together is the scan rate. You've seen this in formats like these. The number of horizontal scan lines in an image depends on the video content. For example, a DVD might be 780 by 480 pixels with a refresh rate of 30 frames per second, while the computer might be 2560 by 1440 at 60 frames per second. For both of these types of content to be viewed on the same display, the display has to be able to play both scan rates. Now because many horizontal scans are completed in just one vertical scan, the horizontal scan has a higher frequency than the vertical scan. The vertical scan rate describes the number of complete video fields delivered per second, which is measured in hertz. You may have heard this as vertical sync rate. All right. The next concept in understanding the basics of video signal is bit depth. Bit depth is a measure of how accurately the signal can potentially be translated back into an analog signal at the end of its journey to the display device. What on earth does that mean? Well, remember when I talked earlier about RGB and how well a signal can replicate color? Bit depth takes care of that. It is defined as the number of states you have in which to describe the sampled voltage level. If you have one bit whose value is zero or one, you can describe the signal as being only on or off. So two states. If you have two bits, you have four possible states. Makes sense, right? As you can imagine, a 16-bit depth would have some two to the 16th power of possible number of states. This directly correlates with the number of shades of color possible to replicate on a display. That's why everyone is all about bits, 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 but if you catch my ROI on LED design video, it's a factor in budgeting for your project. More bits equals more color, yes, but it also means more bandwidth, which means more money, so if your client walks in and says, I want the best color bit depth physically possible, they better understand the cost involved. Just saying. Okay. We've mentioned bandwidth like a hundred times in this video. Let's talk a little bit about it and that'll lead us into transport. So bandwidth. First, consider this analogy. Video signal is fragile and has to travel far to get to where it's gotta go. So how can we get it there safely without any cracks and at its best possible state? So how big your signal is and how long it's gotta travel, how fast it has to get there are all considerations in calculating bandwidth. Another thing to keep in mind is your signal flow. Is the video signal the only thing present? Must you add bandwidth requirements for other signal types, you will need to consider the system's full capacity. In electronics, bandwidth is the range of frequencies that can pass through a circuit. The difference between the highest and lowest frequencies a circuit can detect and react to is the circuit's bandwidth. Gather this, a video signal covers a range of frequencies. 
lower hertz, middle kilohertz, and high megahertz, all of these are present and handling different parts of the signal, hence the whole fragile analogy I brought up earlier. There are several manufacturers who offer a bandwidth calculator on their website to help you put things together. There are many factors to consider, like resolution, refresh rate, bit depth, pixel clock, and more. If you're interested in learning how to estimate video bandwidth on your own, check out our other video we have on our online portal. Now, how does my signal get to where it's got to go? A couple ways, but let's focus on cables and their structure. Cables like DVI, HDMI, DisplayPort, SDI, and so on provide a physical medium for our signal to travel, typically allow for higher or lower quality of video signal, and all cables have their different limitations. DVI was the first accepted digital standard for the transfer of digital video content. It comes in four versions, DVI, DVI-I, DVI-D, and Mini-DVI. DVI-A was a thing once, but it has long been discontinued. HDMI builds on the DVI standard by adding audio, EDID control, HTCP, and Ethernet protocol. HDMI is backwards compatible with DVI, which means you can use HDMI and DVI connections without adapters or special modifications. HDMI comes in three forms, HDMI, Mini HDMI, and Micro HDMI. DisplayPort also builds on the success of DVI and uses a similar yet not completely compatible format to send video and audio. DisplayPort is also available in the Mini DisplayPort version. HDBase-T incorporates the signals of HDMI, Ethernet, control protocols, USB, and 100 watt of DC power. It typically comes as Category 5 cable or above, terminated with your standard RJ45 connector. This format comes with variants. 3-Play allows for three of the five things available, 4-Play allows for four of the five things available, and 5-Play allows for all five elements to be at play during a single transmission. SDI, or Serial Digital Interface, is a set of serial data standards developed to transport digital video data over the BNC terminations. Variants include HDSDI, 6GSDI, 12GSDI, and 24GSDI. SDI does allow for audio and can be transmitted over optical fiber. USB, or Universal Serial Hub, is a generalized digital video data bus that can carry any form of digital data. It comes in five forms. The most recent being USB version is known as USB 3.2. Last but not least, we have Ethernet, and no, I'm not talking about the internet. I am talking about a protocol, and to be more specific, a network protocol. Ethernet can carry a variety of data formats over data networks. There are many Ethernet streaming video data formats that support the real-time interconnection of video sources such as cameras and playback devices with display devices. It can be in several forms. The most popular are wired, optical, and wireless. Feel free to rewind and pause in case you didn't catch all the bullet points of each of the cable available to transport digital video signal. So we have discussed a lot in this video. We understand that digital video signal is made up of the two signals, color and sync. That signal needs direction on where to present itself, so we have our scan rates. Then for digital signal to represent the most true color of signal is our bit depth. Then therefore, there are many types of digital video signal which therefore leads us to different types of displays. All of this together gives us a certain amount of bandwidth that has to be transported to its final destination in some way, shape, or form. For more information on our video signal basics, visit our online training at avixa.org.